N. And yes, we are being recorded. Um, we do record these every month. All right, so hello everybody. My name is Patty and I'm an alcoholic. I am the Area 1, or Alabama Northwest Florida, Area 1 Literature Chair for, for the Alabama North, Northwest Florida area. And this is our monthly online workshop. My name is Patty. I'm an alcoholic. Um, we're going to open this workshop with a moment of silence followed by the serenity prayer. If you guys want to join me. God, uh, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. So just before we get started, I will have a few words to say about virtual meetings. Um, basically, just don't do anything in this meeting that you wouldn't do in your regular meeting if you were to face to face. Mute your microphone when you're when um, you're not speaking if the co-host hasn't done it for you. And please be respectful of anyone who is sharing and including Jim during his presentation. And it would be nice if everyone keeps the video on so that Jim can see who's who's on here, but I don't know that Jim's going to be able to see while he's doing the presentation. But once the presentation is completed, you can turn your video on. Um, but just remember to keep it off if you're doing something that's going to be distracting, such as walking, eating, um, exercising. I literally saw someone doing a rowing machine on here one time. <laughs> and I'd like to thank everybody who comes back every month. We do have a few regulars that are here every month for this workshop. Thank you for showing up for me and for Area 1. I'd like to thank Steve and Annette who um, help keep this meeting going with me every month. Mm -hmm. They are like our tech persons. Um, this workshop will not last more than an hour. We should be done right at 8 o'clock central time uh, unless you have a lot of questions at the end if you have any questions at the end of jim's presentation you can put them in the chat or when you ask you can raise your hand when we open it up later you can raise your hand so let's go ahead and get started with this um i you know what i don't even know where i first heard jim probably in one of these um history things and I started noticing how smart he was when he was answering questions and stuff. And I said, I wonder if I could get Jim to do a presentation for me on literature. And I asked him first of the year if he could do one for us. And he, Jim um, graciously did this wonderful presentation for us on literature that we used before the conference, um, before there was a conference of free literature. So when I was thinking about doing something, I knew I wanted to have him come back. I, w I didn't know it was going to be this year, Jim, but it's this year. And maybe next year we'll have him come back again. I thought, well, I wonder if he could do something on the 12 and 12, any kind of history presentation on 12 and 12. So I asked him, and he said, you know, I've never done one. I personally have never seen one. And he said, but I'll be glad to put something together for you. And I know he's just going to rock it for us tonight. I know that because who's seen a presentation? Anybody seen a presentation on the 12 and 12? Anybody? No, me either. So, oh, Beth raised her hand. So anyway, I'm, I am looking forward to this, Jim. So I'm going to turn it over to you, and you are welcome to take the screen. It is all yours. All right. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Patty. And uh, uh, thank you for the invitation. And uh, uh Hello to uh, to all of the uh, people in Alabama, and thanks to the Area One Literature Committee for inviting me back. Uh, there were times uh, before I got sober where I was not invited back a lot. So uh, we're going to get started right away because, as usual, I have more material than time. So uh, we are going to talk about the history of the 12 and 12. Not a step study, not a tradition study, but a, a history of the book. My name is Jim Worley, and I'm an alcoholic. My sobriety date is March 5th, 1989. My home group is the Living Sober Group in Cancun, Mexico. So we're going to jump right in here, and, and we're going to say, well, why did Bill write the 12 and 12? And uh, the foreword to the 12 Steps and 12 Traditions opens with the statement of purpose for the fellowship, which borrows some language and ideas from the preamble. The purpose of the book is mentioned, quote, this book deals with the 12 steps and 12 traditions of Alcoholics Anonymous, presents an explicit view of the principles by which AA members recover and by which their society functions. The author also comments, 
The book, Alcoholics Anonymous, became the basic text of the fellowship, and it still is. This present volume proposes to broaden the 12 and 12. This present volume pro proposes to broaden and deepen the understanding of the 12 steps as first written in the earlier work. And by this time, the earlier work, of course, of the big book, had uh, taken on quite a reputation for uh, uh, being a sacred book. Bill Wilson was well aware of the worshipful enshrinement of the text of the big book, and he was not particularly happy about it. Bill felt strongly that the program had become what he called frozen by the membership and was the primary reason why he wrote another book, The Twelve Steps and Twelve Traditions, published in 1953, 14 years after the big book. In 1952, in response to an AA member's question about the program in the big book, Bill noted, as to changing the steps themselves or even the text of the AA book, I'm assured by many that I could certainly be excommunicated if a word were touched. It is a strange fact of human nature that when a spiritually centered movement starts and finally adopts certain principles, these finally freeze absolutely solid. There's a wonderful uh, uh, little clip uh, by Bill. We don't have time for it tonight, but just briefly, he talks about uh, when he decided to, he wanted to change the book, the word awakening in step 12, back to its original experience, having had a spiritual experience. And he wanted to change awakening back. And uh, they accused him of heresy and, and uh, threatened to excommunicate him for even one, changing one word of holy writ. And... Uh, but uh, he, he says that uh, what can be done uh, respecting the steps themselves or any part of the book, maybe I can't change it, but I can make a shift by writing these pieces, which I hope folks will like. Those pieces were gathered together the next year and polished into 12 steps and 12 traditions. But nine years later, when his second book was just eight years old, Bill once again revisited this phenomenon of freezing. As time passes, our book literature has a tendency to get more and more frozen, a tendency for conversion into something like dogma. This is a trait of human nature, which I'm afraid we can do little about. We may as well face the fact that AA will always have its fundamentalists, its absolutists, and its relativists. Bait. On May 20th, 1952, another reason for writing the book, Bill wrote to Father Ed Dowling uh, with the draft copy of 12 essays on the traditions, a group of similar essays. He, he wrote, quote, a few people think that the traditions aren't covered with enough dignity that posterity may not like them for that reason. However, we feel that we're writing for the information of alcoholics who ordinarily have no time to read anything much except as it concerns their own survival, the steps. Our idea is to publish the 12 steps and these 12 traditions in a small book to appear, I hope, by next fall. If we're able to do a fair job on the steps, that will be helpful and published along with the traditions. They may act as a bait for reading the latter. However, we'll see. We'll do a little background here on the steps. Of course, uh, why did Bill write them twice? You know, the two principal versions of the 12 steps are markedly different in history and in spirit. One was written by a young, optimistic Bill Wilson on the pink cloud of early sobriety. The other was written by Wilson 15 years later when he was disillusioned and suffering from crippling depression. He wrote the first version in a borrowed office with the pretty secretary transcribing. He wrote the second in a cinder block shack built to escape visitors with a judgmental editor so disgusted with Wilson's shenanigans that he broke away from AA a few years later. Needless to say, the two versions uh, are very different. After 15 years leading AA, he was tired. He felt an enormous burden of responsibility and expectation. In fact, he introduced a resolution in 55 to turn AA over to its members. Quote, he, it may appear that AA consists mainly of racking dilemmas and troubleshooting. He wrote near the end of the book. 
We've been talking about problems because we are problem people. When another writer, Jack Alexander, complimented Bill on his work, Bill answered, Besides my natural tendency to procrastinate, I've had a dreadful hex about further writing. Figure I've been so beat up by the events of these last years that I could never bring off anything more than would be worthwhile. The darkness in which the new steps were composed is reflected in the harshness of their tone. In Step 4 in Alcoholics Anonymous, the big book, for instance, readers are gently led to the idea that they may have some part in their own misfortunes. Selfishness, self-centeredness. No? There's no judgment. But in Step 4 in the 12 and 12 traditions, readers are told that they are tyrannized by their desires, which has resulted in emotional deformities. Readers are scolded for imposing their instincts on others and giving in to the uncontrollable desires for prestige with the resulting soul sickness. So the Twelve Steps and Twelve Traditions was published in 1953. Copyright 52, published 53, almost 14 years after the big book. The need for a second book to supplement the first was strongly felt by Bill W. and other alcoholics as we'll see here in a minute. When the big book first came out, Bill had only four and a half years sober. Dr. Bob Four and most others in the fledgling fellowship, considerably less than that. Not drinking was a totally new experience, and the book understandably concentrated on that. However, as the years rolled on and some began to accumulate, accumulate double-digit sobriety, they discovered that... Uh, that by itself, abstention from alcohol was just not enough. The dry drunk syndrome was becoming all too obvious. One could be sober and still be miserable and lead less than satisfactory lives. Bill himself was a prime example of this. His sobriety had been undermined by more than a decade of unrelenting depression, not to mention the, all of the uh, AA problems. So the question was on the table, could the 12 steps help us to achieve more than physical sobriety, could they help us grow and build character? The steps proportion portion of the 12 and 12 was written to address, address those questions. The traditions portion was written to address a related question which had arisen as the 100 men and women of 39 had grown to tens of thousands by 1953. Could such a large and disparate group continue to work together to help each other stay sober and achieve the goals of a full recovery? The book's foreword explains, This startling expansion brought with it very severe growing pains. Proof that alcoholics could recover had been made, but it was by no means sure that great numbers of yet erratic people could live and work together with harmony and good effect. Everywhere, there arose threatening questions of membership, money, personal relations, public relations, management of groups, clubs, and scores of other perplexities. It was out of this vast welter of explosive experience that AA's 12 traditions took form and were first published in 1946 and later confirmed uh, at AA's first convention in 1950. The tradition section of this volume portrays in some detail the experience which finally produced the 12 traditions and so gave AA its present form, substance, and unity. As AA grows and changes, Bill, now with 18 years sober instead of four, feels the need to reinterpret the 12 steps in a way that is responsive to the new membership of AA and more accurately reflects the program of the New York Fellowship. 12 Steps and 12 Traditions presents Bill's new interpretation of the 12 Steps. The new interpretation is both more social and more psychological than the big book. With quotes like, Alcoholics Anonymous published when our membership was small, dealt with low-bottom cases only. Uh, it was just one of the things that he talked about. AA is now composed of a growing number of alcoholics who still have their health, families, and jobs. Some of these newcomers are also relatively young. Because they are less desperate, these newcomers are also less motivated to work the steps. Few people will sincerely try this again from step one in the 12 and 12. Few people will sincerely try to practice the AA program unless they have hit bottom. 
In order to address the needs of this population, Bill widens the hoop that members have to jump through in order to feel that they're actively working the AA program. He accomplishes this primarily by introducing the method of substitution in his third step instructions and making major changes to the inventory process. In speaking of the trouble that many AAs have with turning their will and life over to the care of God, Bill says, many people begin to solve their problem by the method of substitution. You can, if you wish, make AA itself your higher power. Many members have crossed the threshold just this way. Most of them began to talk of God. Of course, Bill clearly expects that alcoholics who use AA as their higher power will eventually adopt a more spiritual outlook. However, Bill's method of substitution also makes it possible for AA members to feel that they are honestly working the steps without ever turning their lives over to the care of a God. Bill's new instructions for the fourth step are another significant development. The big book outlines an inventory process that sees selfishness the root of the alcoholic's problems. In Bill's new version, however, the root of the alcoholic's problems is not selfishness, but rather instincts that are out of balance. Also, the 12 and 12 inventory is not focused strictly on defects of character. The sponsor points out that the newcomer has some assets which can be noted along with his liabilities. This new inventory is not meant to resemble a soul surgery a la Oxford Group in which the step worker identifies and carves out the defects of character that are blocking his or her soul from God. Rather, this inventory is an open-ended process of introspection and reflection. In the 12, the 12 and 12 is less hopeful than the big book about the results a person can expect from working the 12 steps. There's no promise of a life of freedom from selfishness or a new life of intimacy with spiritual power. Instead, recovering alcoholics should be content with gradual progress over a long period of time. Uh, having been granted a perfect release from alcoholism, why then shouldn't we be able to achieve by the same means a perfect release from every other difficulty or defect? This is a riddle of our existence, the full answer in which may only be in the mind of God. The sentiment that alcoholics should expect sobriety to be marked by long periods of struggle with their personal shortcomings is a reflection of Bill's own struggles with depression. His decreased expectations for the quality of his own sobriety lead him to lower his expectations for others as well. Bill's experiences with seeking help from psychiatrists led him to a new understanding of the inventory process that is more psychological in nature. Also in Bill's mind, the method of substitution is adequate because he does not have the same faith and the ability of spiritual experience to address all of the alcoholic's troubles. This new version of step work is no longer insists on spiritual experience as the answer to the problems. Instead, it offers a solution that is social and psychological in nature. Uh, its brand of step work affects the nature of the 12 steps within AA and will also affect the practice of the steps in all future 12-step fellowships. So there were some other efforts uh, after the big book was published to interpret, expand on, and teach the 12 steps. First of all, probably in Akron. Uh, while the New York members were mostly in favor of the new AA book, Many of the Akron members, including Dr. Bob, felt as though their practice of the Oxford Group tenets was sufficient. And uh, Dr. Bob felt that the big book wasn't written for the blue denim alcoholic. And uh, and so he asked uh, Evan W. to, to uh, prepare some things. There's a manual for alcoholics. Anonymous, excellent. Uh, these are all really good. There was also a, a guide to the 12 steps to explain more about uh, uh, how to stay sober and about the 12 steps. Also, there's something called the table mate. By the way, those pamphlets and, and uh, this pamphlet also are uh, available uh, through uh, Akron and Cleveland and, uh, and a lot of intergroup uh, uh, stores too. The table mate was one of them, it had different uh, names. Uh, it was printed and published by AA groups all over the United States. 
It was called the Table Maid or the Table Leader's Guide, the Detroit Pamphlet, the Washington, D.C. Pamphlet, the Seattle Pamphlet. It was basically the same thing, and it it uh, helped people, again, to understand the uh, the 12 steps. And, of course, there's a famous uh, little red book uh, that Ed Webster wrote, which had a chapter explaining how to work each of the 12 steps. Dr. Bob thought it was the best description of how to work the steps that had ever been written. He sent copies all over the U.S. and Canada with his recommendation. And until Dr. Bob's death in 1950, he insisted that the New York office make copies of this book available for sale throughout their office. Ed Webster also wrote the book Stools and Bottles, and uh, and and which is basically about the the first four steps, uh, and talks a lot about the uh, um, the defects of character in the inventory after the three-legged stool of steps one, two, and three. Some background on the traditions. Bill said our recovery program was really complete now. We got the steps. Then came the test whether our growing groups could live and work together, whether the enormous explosive quality of our fellowship would find in our principles of recovery a sufficient containing element. Soon we came to realize little by little that we of Alcoholics Anonymous must hang together or indeed we should hang separately. And in that sometimes frightening experience, the tradition of Alcoholics Anonymous was forged. And at Cleveland in 1950, it was confirmed by our fellowship. No body of law was this tradition, Bill said, a set of principles infused with the spirit of our 12 steps of recovery and enshrined in the heart of each of us. That would be our protection, we thought, from any blows with which the outside world would assail us our protection from any temptations to which we might be subjected within. Of course, uh, many of the traditions were uh, actually included in the, in the foreword to the, uh, to the first edition, uh, where it says it's important that we remain anonymous. Uh, our work is an avocation. When speaking publicly, omit the personal name. Um, we ask the press uh, also to respect this. We're not an organization. We have no dues or fees. The only requirement for membership is an honest desire uh, to stop drinking. And we're not uh, allied with any faith, sect, or denomination. So the, the, the roots of the traditions were, were there from the beginning. Bill also says that now the thing that concerns us most in Alcoholics Anonymous is what of our future? What about our permanent unity? For unless we have unity permanently, there will be little recovery. Now, as you have gathered, you friends of ours, alcoholics are really very explosive material, and they still are, even sober. Uh, we are not saints in Alcoholics Anonymous today. We have our group troubles. We have the panhandlers. We have the dictators. That We have people who want to try to run things. We have all sorts of difficulties. Little Red Riding Hood and the Big Bad Wolf. And then we have the Pharisees who throw stones at them. So Bill sat down to write the traditions, and uh, as with the writing the big book, uh, it was a, a process. You know, the, the, they didn't come down on tablets uh, uh, from the sky. And uh, he sat and he wrote and he scribbled and he, he changed. And, and uh, his uh, half-sister, Helen, she worked for the grapevine and... and uh, she uh, she remembers, in addition to her grapevine chores, she likes remembering the typing she did for Bill. He was beginning to think about those ideas that later became the traditions, she said. And he had a one-track mind. Whenever he was figuring out something like that for AA, he simply could not put his mind on anything else. Many times at dinner at Stepping Stones, Lois and I would look at each other and start to giggle because he would picked up a fork to eat his soup with. Most of the time, he liked to dictate lying on the floor at the head of the stairwell in Bedford Hills with his arms folded behind his head. I typed those traditions over and over, she recalled. He would think two or three of them were pretty good, but then he would share them with other AAs. The house was always full of people. Weekends, 30 or 40 would drop in, and Bill would read them what he'd done, and the discussion would start, said his sister. Next day, we would tear up what we'd done and start all over. Took months and months, so I sure hope they're right now. 
In April of 1946, the Grapevine was incorporated as the second publishing arm of the Alcoholic Foundation. In April, uh, uh, they carried Bill's essay titled, 12 Suggested Points for AA Tradition. Uh, they later, they, these were the original forms. They later came to be called the long, long form of the traditions. In December of 1947, the grapevine carried a notice that an important new 48-page pamphlet titled AA Traditions was sent to each group, and there were copies available for each member. The first reception of the traditions was interesting and amusing. The reaction was mixed, to say the least. Only groups in dire trouble, this is Bill talking, took them seriously. From some quarters, there was a violent reaction, especially from groups that had long lists of protective issues, uh, protective rules and regulations. There was much apathetic indifference. Several of our intellectual members cried loudly that the traditions reflected nothing more than the sum of my own hopes and fears for Alcoholics Anonymous. Therefore, I began to travel. He traveled all over the country uh, uh, promoting his traditions. And he talked a lot, he said, I talked a lot about the new traditions. People were at first politely attentive, though it must be confessed that some did go to sleep during my early harangues. But after a while, I got letters containing sentiments like this. Bill, we'd love to have you come and speak. Do tell us where you used to hide your bottles and all about that big hot flash experience of yours, but for heaven's sakes, please don't talk any more about those damn traditions. May it be urged that while these principles have been stated in rather positive language, they're still only suggestions for our future. We of AA have never enthusiastically responded to any assumption of personal authority. Perhaps it is well for AA that this is true. So I offer these suggestions neither as one man's dictum nor as a creed of any kind, but rather as a first attempt to portray that group ideal toward which we have assuredly been led by a higher power these ten years past. On May 20th of 1952, Bill wrote to uh, Father Dowling, his friend and spiritual advisor, a letter to accompany some drafts that he was sending him of what seems to have been the twelve separate chapters of the Twelve Traditions. He told him that he wanted Father Ed to send him any criticisms that he had of the material and explained that at this stage, Tom Powers, Betty Love, and Jack Alexander were also taking a critical look at the chapters. So he had, uh, had some some people, uh, specific people, uh, helping him with the editing and, and having some input. In the 1952 letter, Bill said, now I'm getting down uh, once more to writing, I expect to do a book which will cover the application of the 12 steps to the whole problem of living, the problem of happy sobriety. After that will come a manual of AA services, so I'm beginning to get on paper our whole experience. In uh, July of 52, he wrote to Father Dowling, he said, the problem of the 12 steps has been to deepen and broaden them, both for newcomers and old timers. We have to deal with the atheists, agnostics, believers, depressives, paranoids, clergymen, psychiatrists, and all and sundry. How to widen the opening so it seems right and reasonable to enter, enter there, and at the same time avoid distractions, distortions, and the certain prejudices of all who may read seems fairly much of an assignment. Bill used the same image of widening the entrance when he talked about step two and the, the hoop that we have to jump through. Uh, but I have good help, Bill said. I have good help of that I am certain, both over here and over there. The over there, of course, refers to the spirit world. Uh, Bill believed he could channel and uh, believed in uh, speaking with uh, this, the other world. And he slipped in this voice from the other world like this was an everyday happening. It was, he said, the voice of Boniface, an apostle from England. Um in uh, 52, uh, Father Ed had a retinal stroke, and, and Bill uh, uh, continued to work on it uh, um, with his editors. But partly perhaps of Father Ed's declining health, Bill asked another Jesuit priest to also help edit the book, a, na a man named uh, Father John Ford, who was one of the most preeminent Catholic moral theologians of that era. And Ford had a further 
qualification, he was a member of Alcoholics Anonymous himself. And uh, just a little note here in his Christmas letter in 1952, Father Ed addressed both Bill and Lois. He had given uh, Bill a, a copy of the St. Francis Prayer. And he wrote, at this season of the year, it's so easy to think back to that New Year's Eve and day that we had together. The intervening years have cemented our friendship. I know how much of yourself is in the prayer of Francis of Assisi. Now we know uh, now because of other research that, of course, the prayer was not written by Francis of Assisi. Um, but uh, it was still, it has become our 11th step prayer. Lord, make me a channel of thy peace. Where that particular translation that Bill used came from or whether he uh, just modified the traditional translation, uh, we don't know yet. Uh, it was actually written around uh, uh, 1915, uh, actually 1912 probably by a, a French priest. Uh, and it's called the Peace Prayer. The writing, editing, and approval of the 12 and 12. If we lay out a timetable, here's kind of a quick timetable. August 1945, the grapevine carried Bill W.'s first traditions essay. In April of 46, the grapevine uh, carried the essay 12 suggested points for AA tradition. 47, at the suggestion of Earl Treat, the founder of AA in Chicago, Bill began, Earl told him, he said, Bill, can't you get it through your thick head that the drunks don't like to read? And he, he told him that uh, he, we needed to shorten them. So uh, he, they, they, he worked with the Earl to help develop the short forms of the traditions. Uh, the short forms in 1949 uh, of the tradition was published in the Grapevine. In uh, 1950, of course, the uh, what was the, everyone there gave their unanimous approval to a partly paraphrased version of the Twelve Traditions. In mid 1952, Bill had finished the basic draft of the part of the Bush and dealt with the traditions, and he sent a copy to Father Dowling. He sent other copies, just like he had done with the big book. He sent copies, uh, we'll get to that just in a minute. In, of course, 52, uh, Father Dowling had a retinal stroke, and uh, but uh, it was eventually printed in 1953. This is a letter from Bill, uh, transcribed it here. Attached, you will find my manus manuscript dealing with the 12 steps. This is for your criticism or suggestions. And just like the original manuscript that he sent out of the big book uh, to psychiatrists, doctors, ministers, rabbis, and uh, and everybody else, uh, he, he got some feedback. Uh, these are just, we don't have time to do all of them, but uh, these are just his uh, or his originals. And some of the, there were, there were changes. Uh, in, uh, in step one, it says, uh, it warped our minds into such an obsession of destructive drinking that only God can remove it from us. And then later on, it talks about uh, our, our bankruptcy is growing, human concerns is complete, and our humiliation is absolute. Well, it finally ended up, instead of using the word God, he said, an act of, only an act of providence can remove it from us. And uh, he eliminated the phrase, and our humiliation is absolute. And again, we don't have time to go through all of his editing, but that the original manuscript was edited just as the big book original manuscript was edited and changed. Um, to edit the new book, Bill tapped his friend Tom Powers, as we've mentioned, who'd worked in advertising and lived nearby in Chappaqua, and magazine editor Betty Love. The three met in the morning at Wits End, the cinder block office that Bill had built on a ridge above his house. Soon after they began the work, Bill was felled with the third disabling depression uh, of his life, which he called a period of blackness. Some mornings, Tom Powers later told me, this was written by uh, Susan Cheever, uh, his biographer, one of his biographers, he had put his head down on his, he just put his head down on his desk and weep. 
while Powers and Love tapped out the new steps on Bill's typewriter. Uh, the worst of these depressive bouts were between 1945 and 1955. Something that it's important to remember that both Bill and the conference, this is from Bill in uh, AA Comes of Age, the 12 Steps and 12 Traditions is considered a textbook, just as the big book is. Bill in 12, uh, AA Comes of Age, excuse me, 12 Steps and 12 Traditions uh, in 19, this small volume is strictly a textbook which explains AA's 24 basic principles and their application. And again, uh, in another place in uh, AA Comes of Age, says, Our textbook, 12 Steps and 12 Traditions, states that anonymity is the greatest protection our society can ever have. And, and this is important. I mean, there are a lot of people, there were people then and there are people today that don't like the uh, 12 and 12. You know, well, that's all right. You don't have to like anything. But... Uh, you know, it is, it was considered, is considered a textbook by both Bill and the, uh, and the conference. Uh, Bill was, uh, paid as he was, uh, for the rest of his writing. He was paid a, uh, for what he wrote, the big book, A Comes of A's, the 12 Steps and 12 Traditions, and as Bill sees it. If you look at this, uh, it's kind of lots of numbers, uh, you look at the, up in the top left hand there, there's a blue arrow. Here's the column for his, uh, it's actually about his royalties. But if you look there in the first thing in yellow, in 1953, there were 29,567 12 and 12s sold. Uh -huh. And uh, by the time Bill died, the second uh, the blue arrow there, uh, 281,054 uh, 12 and 12s had been sold. Uh, and as happens often with authors, when they die, uh, sales of their books increase. Uh, so it, it increased considerably as AA grew uh, in the following years uh, to uh, you know, almost half a million a year. Following uh, are the advisory actions of the General Service Conference of Alcoholics Anonymous, uh, the advisory actions relevant to the Conference Literature Committee. In 1951, I think we talked about this last time, it was recommended that in future years, AA textbook literature should have conference approval. Prior to the vote on this subject, it was pointed out that adoption of the suggestion would not preclude the continued issuance of various printed documents by non-foundation sources. No desire to review, edit, or censor non-foundation material is implied. The objective is to provide in the future a means. These are words, these are the exact quotes and words from the advisory actions of the conference. In 1952, the ones related to the 12 and 12, since that's what we're on tonight. 1952, it said that uh, it was recommended that uh, Bill's report of his proposed program of activity be approved. And uh, further down there in yellow, uh, he proposed uh, a new series of anecdotal analyses of 12 traditions and three, a series of orderly point-by-point -point essays of the 12 steps. So they was uh, approved in 1953. Um, the corporate name of Works Publishing had been changed to Alcoholics Anonymous Publishing. The first conference-approved book printed under the new name was 12 Steps and 12 Traditions. It contains the final wording of the short form of the traditions we know today is where and when the short form was conference-approved. There were two wording changes. Uh, the term primary spiritual aim, originally in Tradition 6, was changed to primary purpose. The term principles above personalities originally in Tradition 12 was changed to principles before personalities. In 1955, the retail price uh, was to remain at 275 with the price of AA groups, two AA groups of 250 In 1963, they proposed a deluxe edition of the 12 and 12 was discussed, but it was tabled for further consideration. In 1964, a proposed edition of 12 Steps and 12 Traditions 
that would be smaller in size and generally more compact than the existing addition, they recommended that it be approved. In 1976, uh, 1976, the present terminology using used regarding the word suggested when referring to the 12 steps is consistent with that employed in the big book and should remain as is. In 1989, a footnote. Okay, so having footnotes in the 12 and 12 uh, is part of its history. There was a footnote was added to Tradition 8 in the book 12 and 12 to update the job description of present-day GSO staff members. Uh, 1982, it was recommended that since the book 12 Steps and 12 Traditions is available on cassette, there's no need to print the book in large type at this time. Well, there must not have been any old people like me on there. Or they'd know why you, you need a big... Anyway, in 1984, the word... 1984, okay? So as early as 1984, they were talking about changing some of the language. Um, and uh, the word queers, it was recommended that the word queers in 12 Steps and 12 Traditions not be changed to homosexuals and lesbians. Recognizing fellowship, feeling that Bill W.'s textbook writings be retained as originally published. In 1991, the 12 Steps and 12 Traditions be published in large print. Well, there we go. Finally, something I can read. 1995, a pocket edition of the 12 Steps and 12 Traditions be published. And in 2002, the text in the book, 12 Steps and 12 Traditions, written by Bill W., remain as is. So this is a continuing uh, issue. Uh, written by Bill, remain as is, recognizing the fellowship's feeling that Bill's writing be retained as originally published. Uh, Oops. 1992, it was recommended that uh, uh, the 1986 advisory actions listed below pertaining to sexist language. So as early as 92, uh, they, they were talking about the sexist language and how that it possibly needed modifying. But the, the advisory action pertaining to sexist language in the big book and other Bill W. writings adequately addressed the issue, quote, as the preface to the big book clearly states that the text was written in 39 and that it has not been changed, no further explanation uh, regarding out-of-date phrases or gender-orientated pronouns or chapter titles is necessary. Uh, although the AA, uh, uh, WS editorial staff continue to degenderize AA literature uh, with the exception of Bill's writings. As the writing, they... they reprinted uh, staffing at the booth instead of manning and other things. So this is, this is early. Uh, you know, this is not uh, uh, something recent. 2003, it was recommended that uh, a draft introduction be added to the front matter um, of the 12 and 12 uh, and reviewed by the trustees. The purpose of adding an introduction, again, to explain the language in 12, this is a continuing uh, issue in the 12 Steps and 12 Traditions, and would include the following information. Time and area of publica era of publication, the language is a reflection of the time period. They continue repeating that instead of making any changes. Reference uh, to the 2002, it was unanimously recommended that the text in the book uh, written by Bill be retained as originally published. Same phrasing. 2005, the following introduction be added to the uh, uh, to the front matter of the 12 and 12 uh, in in that uh, it was published in 1953 and the book in 1935 there in yellow in recent years some members and friends of AA has asked if it asked if it would be wise to update the language idioms and historical references to present uh, and more contemporary image for the fellowship however we go back to the same old uh, phrasing as before, um, uh, that it was unanimously recommended that the text in the book, 12 Steps Written by Bill, remain as is. Well, in, 19, in 2021, uh, 
this is the uh, face sheet of the new uh, new editions of the 12 and 12. And uh, you notice that uh, the blue arrow there, it says, reformatted and footnoted June 2021 in accordance with advisory actions of the 71st General Service Conference. And, uh, and it says, the text in the book, 12 Steps and 12 Traditions, written by Bill W., remain as is, recognizing the fellowship's feeling that Bill's writing be retained as originally published. However, uh, however, because the book has helped so many alcoholics find recovery, there exists strong sentiment within the fellowship against any change to it. In fact, the 2002 General Service Conference discussed this issue, and it was unanimously recommended that the text uh, remain as originally published. However, with a focus on inclusivity, the 2021 General Service Conference updated and footnoted some of the original language for clarity. The exact wording of the advisory action of 2020 is as follows. A revision be made to page 117 in the book 12 Steps and 12 Traditions, replacing the phrase opposite sex with the word partner. So there it says on text page 117, which currently reads, nearly every sound human being experiences at some time in life a compelling desire to find a mate of the opposite sex with whom the fullest possible union can be made, etc., that be revised to read nearly every sound human being experiences at some time in life a compelling desire to find a partner with whom the fullest possible union can be made. The sentence which includes the phrase lustful enough to rape in paragraph one on page 66 be revised to refer to the seven deadly sins without specific mention of examples. So the text on page 66 currently reads, no one wants to be angry enough to murder, lustful enough to rape, uh, gluttonous enough to ruin his health. And that is to be revised to read, no one wants to commit deadly sins of anger, lust, or gluttony. And those pages uh, have been updated in the latest printing of the 12 and 12 to read, no one wants to commit the deadly sins of anger, lust, or gluttony. And then there's an asterisk with a footnote at the bottom uh, that, uh, that, that says that uh, this sentence has been updated from the original text to generalize the possible consequences of extreme actions. And the other uh, change that was recommended is that... Uh, a compelling desire to find a partner with whom the fullest possible union can be made. And at the end of that, an asterisk again that says, this sentence has been updated from the original text to reflect the inclusivity of the fellowship. Um, now, before I go on, the uh, just, just real quickly, um, I... The slides that uh, you've just seen represent about 20% of the slides that I have in this presentation, but uh, this is just a kind of a quick overview of the my research so far. Uh, and uh, um, I just want to include a couple of, of quotes from Bill Wilson, um, where, where he talks about some of the things that uh, uh, have, have happened. He says, we're in an... In, in, we are in yet an era of change. Our 12 steps probably won't change. The traditions, not at all likely. But our manner of communications, our manner of organizing ourselves for function or service, let us hope that this goes on changing for the better forever. We're just going to read the yellow highlighted. There's a very natural resistance we have toward change. We're apt to say, well, it worked very well the way it was, so why change? But after all, we have, taken, we have undertaken several tremendous changes. In the beginning, people said, why a book? Why do we need a book? We ought to stay open-minded on this matter of change. 
with we reverence the past and its lessons for so long as those teachers work. When they don't, we readapt and we reshape. That has been our history. When talking about history, uh, Bill says we are at a crossroads and this is a good time to re-examine how well we have looked upon our AA history. We may look upon our destiny with no violation of our principle that we're to live one day at a time. We mean that emotionally each in his own personal life is never to repine about the past glory too much in the present or presume upon the future. We shall attend to the day's business, but we shall try to apprehend ever more truth from the lessons of our history. Not the lessons of our successes, but the lessons of our defections, failures, and the awful emotions that can set us loose upon us. For these indeed are the new raw, are the raw materials that God has used to forge this still rather little instrument called Alcoholics Anonymous. So we may look at destiny and we may ask ourselves about it and speculate upon it a little if we do not presume to play God. Thank you for your attention. I think I probably went over a little bit of time, but uh, uh, um, I hope there was uh, something interesting in there for you. And uh, th there was a lot, like I said, that uh, I did not include for, for time reasons, of course. But uh, anyway, thank you again for, for inviting me. Uh, Patty and the group, and thanks for all the the other visitors. Uh, I see Jim D and Patrick and Rob and some of the other people from the history uh, uh, meeting. So, welcome to everyone, and thank you again. Thank you again, Jim. Well, I appreciate you coming here and doing that. I learned a lot. I don't know if anybody else did, but anytime I listen to you, I learn something about the history. Um, and I, you know, you were, you went through that slide really quick where Dr. Bob had commissioned someone to write those pamphlets. I have those pamphlets. I got them from Akron. You can get anything you want from the Akron Central Office. I tell you that now. So if you guys want any of that old stuff, go to their webpage and just click, 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 and they'll send it to you. Yeah.